excuse my hair, it looks a bit weird today, it's getting too long. Um, hey, welcome back to the weekly foundation review. Uh, it's not what I've decided to call it, but that is a temporary name. It doesn't have a name, I don't know. <laughs> this is a series in which I test lots of random foundations that I bought, whether they're high end or high street. Um, but instead of picking one at random today, I have chosen uh, the Maybelline Dream Satin Liquid because I saw it in the box and I was like, that reminds me of the Dream Matte Mousse that I used to buy all the time. If you don't know what Dream Matte Mousse is, it's this horrid stuff that I used to use obsessively when I was like 13. And I thought it was great, honestly, and I'm not gonna say anyone who uses it is wrong, but I used to cake it on and it would dry my skin out so, so much because it basically suffocates your skin. Um, but I, I saw this and I was like, oh, that takes me back to when I used to use it. Yeah. So, instead of using that and testing that one today, I thought I'd test that. No logic there whatsoever. So as in previous videos, um, I have used the Vanishing Cream uh, Facial Moisturizer by Lush brought in today and um, the Professional Primer by Benefit, which is great, although I am running out. Um, I need to get a new one before next week. This is in the shade um, number 10. This is Ivory. So without further ado, I'm just gonna put it on my face. Oh, it's kind of moussey and really thick. You can't see it. But I promise you, it looks like a mousse. Although I will say, immediately off the bat, this is spreading really, really nicely. Um, it's not... Well, it's a little bit cakey. Um, it's, it's a very heavy duty foundation. Already you can tell that it's gonna... It's gonna cover the face a lot, but I just know there's gonna be a lot of creasing um, in the fine lines of my eyes. But, um, it is spreading really nicely. I think this is probably spreading the best out of all of the foundations I've tried so far, actually. I'm just going to do half of my face so I can show you guys like a sort of before and after. Although, it's um, it's not really going as far as I thought it would. This is already like my second uh, top up on the brush and I'm only, I'm only, I've only done like a third of my face. So possibly not good value for money. Uh, as always, the recommended retail price will be on the screen at some point, probably now is a good time to put that in, Emma, who is editing. But actually, genuinely, this is really, really nice. It is kind of showing up my dry areas, but not as bad as I would have thought for a really thick foundation. It is really shiny, and it is quite cakey around here. Maybe I just used too much, but I know that that's gonna start looking pretty bad in a little while. What's good is you kind of, you almost can't tell, except this side looks a lot more airbrushed which is what they're going for, I suppose. I would genuinely say it's doing a really good job. Right, anyway, I'm gonna carry on with the uh, other side of my face. And also, yes, my lips look terrible today. I don't know why this week they've just been really, really, but anyway, not here for my lips, right? Don't make a joke. It's quite frustrating because I think this is the lightest shade they had, probably, apart from maybe porcelain, which wouldn't have suited my skin tone. And it's still got too much of an orange base to it, which is, which is a shame. As I said to you, um, in the first video, I think, maybe the second video, um, I've, al I've always had a lot of problems getting a foundation that matches my skin properly. Like, in a lot of videos, people say, oh, your skin looks orange, uh, your, face look or your face looks orange, but your neck looks white, and it's because no foundations match me, really. Even the lady in Sephora, like, a few months ago for me, was just like, none of these are suiting you, and she didn't know what was going on, so maybe I just have alien skin, who knows. So that's the skin done. And I think, actually, it's done a really, really good job. And I'm really impressed with it. Would I use this? Definitely. Honestly, this is this is really, really good. I'm gonna try and get even closer. Oh, gotta waddle my way forward. I mean, already, we've got the tiniest bit of creasing. As I said, it's quite a heavy duty foundation, so it will do. I still have this dry patch, I am aware. I know, but that is going down. Um, actually, it has. it's not really showing up any of my dry patches, like a little bit there, maybe but not, not on a horrendous scale. In fact, I reckon if I just did that, it would probably cover it up. It's done a really, really good job with my pores, actually. It's a bit shiny, for sure. Let me try and show you my dry patch on my head, which is going, as you can tell. It's pretty much gone now. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's done a really, really good job. Again, like I said, it's a bit shiny. You can definitely see it's not, it's not a matte foundation. It's definitely, I mean, it does say Dream Satin. Satin is supposed to be shiny. You can see a shade difference, but again, I said to you guys before, try not to judge it too much from the shade because a lot of people don't have my skin tone, which is really difficult to match. But apart from the shine, I reckon if you, if I was to put on like a powder, like the Sheer Loose powder, which I have here, um, 
it will probably look absolutely fine. Although I'm worried that would really dry out the foundation and make it more cakey. I don't know. I'm not going to try it for the sake of keeping this completely fair. But I'm happy. And now I have to wait an hour to see how bad the creasing is going to get. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't let me down. I'm hoping that it's like a minor amount of creasing that you can just sort of wipe away. I don't know. Maybe none. Maybe none. Let's hope for none. Let's be positive. Nuns. Hey, so um, it's been long enough. It's been like over an hour. Um, I've just been sitting here watching videos because I thought, hey, I could edit stuff, but I can tell after an hour, it didn't do too great, but it's about average for the other ones that I've recorded. The skin still looks good here. Um, that was obviously dry beforehand. Like, I'm, I'm really happy with that, genuinely. I think that might be the best one that we have uh, reviewed so far. It is such a shame about the shade difference, but honestly, I think that coverage is really, really nice. Um, I'm really impressed. I thought this would be a lot more, you know, creasing after an hour, but um, it stayed on my face. It says, um, I don't know, it doesn't. It doesn't say 24 hour, it doesn't claim that stupid 24 hour wear thing, it just it just does a good job and stays on your face. What more could you want? I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, um, as always leave comments below telling me what foundations you'd like me to review, and I will try and get around to doing them. I still have a ton in here and I'm going to get through those before I do any of the other ones that you guys really really want me to do, um, unless they're in the box, obviously. But um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!